Hello everyone. Uh, we have discussed in the previous video what is shielding and what kind of signals have to be shielded. And we also saw uh, what are the different kind of signals which we have to shield and what are the signals which do not have to be shielded. Now here we will uh, take the topic uh, discussion ahead and see what are the different ways in which shielding is actually done in a, a layout. Uh, this shielding is a simple shielding where uh, I can, you know, let's say this is my victim and uh, and their aggressors uh, surrounding it. We are we are having many aggressors. Now the first kind of shielding is we actually take the same metal and just connect uh, in 3D. This metals will actually look something like this. You know, uh, this is metal m2 and in the same metal that is m2 surrounding it i have two uh, metals running on side this is usually done if you are very sure you know the aggressor is on this side or whether the aggressor is on other side so that the any coupling which is happening on this side can be avoided and these two shield metals they will be connected to vdd or usually they are usually connected to vss it also depends uh, whether you want to connect it to vdd or vss depend upon uh, your needs in the layout and also what kind of signal is this so this is the side shielding where i connect the metal only on the sides where I, there is shielding only on the sides we can also do all four side shielding for example if this is metal 2 on top i will have metal 3 so let me take this a little down. yeah so on top we can do metal because this is metal 2 okay so this is metal 2 on top we will we can take metal 3 and on bottom we can take metal 1 so on top what we can do is we can take complete sheet layer you know, running on top of it of metal metal 3 and we have to actually connect it downwards also like this we have to connect downwards okay this this complete is metal 3 running on top and bottom we, we will have metal we will have metal 1 so let me use different colors here for clarity we have metal one running on the bottom and we also have to connect it. you have to connect it like this on bottom okay so just you can imagine you know there is a box okay there is a box inside a bigger box something like this okay so this is just like your metal m uh, m2 this is m2 metal so on top it is uh, m3 metal and on bottom it is m1 metal all metals are connected like this using wires and they will be together connected to a stable vdd or a stable vss so this is a very good shielding where we have aggressors can be from bottom and they can be on sides so any kind of aggressor from all four sides the signal can be easily protected so it depends uh, on the the choice of whether you want to do a side shielding or you want to do shielding on all four sides it is purely a context based decision uh, meaning that uh, it depends what kind of layout you are doing what are your layout constraints uh, so what in what signal in what metal are you having this uh, victim and all other things it is purely a, a dynamic decision which you do based on if the design engineer what what kind of uh, what kind of signal is this and you know and also based on layout requirements mm, with experience uh, you will get to know you can dynamically decide what to do for example let me let me say let me say uh, I, I already know that i have metal routing somewhere here of uh, aggressor and i know that i do not have aggressor on this side okay 
I do not have aggressors on top and I do not have aggressor bottom. So we'll go for this kind of shielding, only side shielding. So if you are, if you, you are not sure, unsure uh, whether uh, the aggressor is on which side, if you do not know, okay, or if you think that that can be coupling from any side, then you have to do shielding on all four sides. So that is about it. Uh, so these are the different things we had. We discussed so many things about uh, shielding, uh, and another con uh, point which I want to discuss is uh, the side effects. <laughs> the side uh, effects of shielding. So when you are shielding a particular signal, remember that this is a uh, metal. Let's say, let's say this your victim is in M2. You're connecting metals on either sides. So on sides you are let's say you're taking other metals and connecting. Here also remember that even though we have connected these metals, the shield metals to VSS. Okay, this is we have connected to VSS VDD. Remember that you have also created capacitors between the victim and the shield metals correct because they are running on sides so you have actually created this capacitors in between these two and see what is happening here is there is a silent uh, victim here there is a victim and there is a capacitors created so if you draw the structure over here okay there is a victim and you have actually created by shielding you have actually created capacitance and this capacitance you have connected it to vss let's say so what you have done actually done is you are connecting you are actually increasing the load on the signal you are loading the signal correct and uh, let's say if it is of some uh, 50 femtofarad okay and let's say if this is a signal which is not a constant signal let's say if it is a clock okay if this is a clock so what can happen in during this case is if you do such kind of shielding if the, if the signal in the victim is a clock signal you are actually if you zoom in this part what can happen is because the load is high during charging you know this signal will charge very slowly and during discharging this will discharge very slowly so the rise and fall times uh, in real time they will become slow so this charging time and discharging time of this clock will become really very slow because you have loaded the actual victim with so much of capacitance so you have to be very sure what uh, whether are are you okay with this kind of uh, load with the signal is it okay or not so that is again a dynamic decision which you have to you can make along with your design engineer so usually usually as far as i have seen the clock signals are usually not uh, shielded and even if they're shielded we make sure that uh, that we have so the load is not so high so that uh, this rise time doesn't affect the next blocks okay that's all i wanted to discuss about uh, the shielding if you have any questions about this video you can definitely post them in the comment section thank you for watching